oh, the thought of it still to this, oh my god, the thought of it still to this day is like unimaginable. It's like an unimaginable pain. And hey guys, it's your girl Taylor, and welcome back to my channel, Taste Tips, the go to place for skincare, beauty, and lifestyle videos that dare to break down barriers and challenge expectations. Now, I've talked a lot about skincare and beauty, but today is my very first lifestyle video. And what I mean by lifestyle is anything that's going on in my life. So I thought I would start off my channel lifestyle video with a story time. And seeing that I do do skincare reviews, I thought it would be important to, you know, address one of the things that comes up in my comments, especially on my Instagram. And I've had people before be like, Taylor, you have such nice skin, but what is this colossal hole on the side of my face? And I thought I would tell you guys how I got this scar and a little bit why it's not something I can cover with makeup. So, and maybe to address the fact that if you ever see this and you come to this video, you'll know to not go in the comments and say, hey Taylor, by the way, you have a huge scar on your face. Thank you. I know. Living it. Anyways, so. The reason why I got this scar is for people who don't know, I try to say this in almost all of my videos and I might just stop saying it at this point, but the reason why I have this scar is because I'm actually in a wheelchair and I know being in a wheelchair doesn't mean that you should have scars, but let me get to the story. So as you guys can see, I don't have the full use of my hands. My hands are a little bit curled um, due to my gymnastics accident. 10 years ago, I was a Canadian national gymnast, did the whole thing, bada boom, bada bing, was projected to go to the 2012 Olympics, but unfortunately, while training in 2008, um, I attempted a skill that was told I had to do by my coach. That is an entirely different video. If you want to see that whole video of how I actually ended up in a wheelchair, um, hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below if you want to hear my crazy Olympic slash not Olympic journey and how, yeah, how I got here. Um, comment that down below and I will get into that for sure in a whole other video. But after landing and being on the mat because I got injured during gymnastics, I was immediately taken to the kids hospital in, the children's hospital here in my city. Sick Kids Hospital and I want to start by saying Sick Kids Hospital is one of the best places in the entire world. If you, God forbid that you ever get injured and you're a child, I will say that Sick Kids is the most welcoming place um, you could ever go to to be taken care of and lucky for me I was there and spent three weeks there while I was recovering and fighting for my life. Now when I got to the hospital I was completely lost. Um, I was rushed in an ambulance, didn't know what was going on, all I knew was my body was paralyzed and they kept saying that I was going in for surgery and I was like, what are they going to be doing surgery on? Because for me at 14 at the time, I didn't really know my body very well, which was odd because I was a national level athlete, but I didn't understand the inner workings of my body. So me being paralyzed, I thought that essentially me hurting my neck meant that I was like stunned in the next couple hours I was going to be completely okay and you know in the next day or two I'd be up and running again and then the next three months I might become a cheerleader like I was so delusional guys but it's just because I just was not aware what was going on and they kept telling me that I'm going in for surgery and then they finally told me they're going to do spine surgery on me and I was terrified but I also had about eight or nine different people swarming around me and before I knew it I had IVs on me and I went in for surgery. When I woke up at a surgery I had this huge tube down my throat, couldn't breathe, couldn't breathe on my own properly um, and I was heavily sedated on morphine and so I for the first like two or three days I was in and out of sleep and had no idea about this contraption that was on my head. And when I tell you a contraption, I mean a contraption. Shun! Contraption! I... <laughs> when I tell you guys that I literally had no idea it was there, it was right in front of me. This cage like hell was right in front of my eyes and I couldn't see it. And it was because I was so drugged up and the fact that 
I couldn't move my head even a little bit. And so I was just seeing forward. I wasn't even using my peripheral vision to see the two bars that were right in front of my head. And the two bars I'm talking about is this thing called a halo, which makes me laugh because it is a funny name because for me, the halo was hell to deal with, but I guess it might be called the halo because it really does save people's lives. So what I didn't know at the time was when I went into surgery, I went into surgery to realign my spine. Um, I fractured my C4, C5, and C6, so that's part of your cervical spine, which starts like, you know, right at the top of your head and goes down. And your spine, you know, it's stacked like this. And so essentially my bones, what, look at that hair doing something. Essentially the bones separated like this, and one of my bones lodged into my spinal cord and cut my spinal cord, and that's actually how I became paralyzed. Because you can break your neck, you can fracture your neck and still be able to walk around, not have any paralysis. But because of my bone cutting my spine, that's what cut off all the nerve highways to my body. This sounds really So my bone is actually what cut my spinal cord, which caused me to be paralyzed from the neck down. And I know people always ask me, if you're paralyzed from the neck down, how do you have movement in your arms? And the fact of the matter is, paralysis is defined as um, the fine motor skills and function and also the numbness of your body and so a lot the majority of my body is numb and I cannot feel it um, I can move my arms a little bit, but I have no motions of triceps I have really strong biceps and I cannot move my fingers individually which um, Causes that's from paralysis and that's why I'm considered a quadriplegic and not a paraplegic And I know it's hard to see but I'm actually sitting in a power wheelchair right now so when I went in for surgery, what ended up happening was they had to realign my spine, which meant that when my spine separated, they needed something to pull it back in alignment together. And that meant um, surgically putting on this halo. And what this halo in, um, detailed and had, I'll insert a picture somewhere along here, but um, they had to screw several screws into my skull to help stabilize my neck and attach to those screws were these bars that were again attached to this bodysuit that went um, from my chest to about my hip and it was very very hard. Inside of that was sheepskin to you know create a soft layer between myself and the hard plastic and the bars were attached to this bodysuit which were attached to the screws so I had four screws on my forehead and one screw behind each ear, and that kept my head completely straight. If you can think of Mean Girls at the end of the movie when Regina George gets hit by the bus and goes to prom with that halo thing on her head, that is what I actually had in real life. Um, and similarly, I think in one of the Saw movies, this person is put in a cage, and that's kind of what it reminded me of for me personally. That's the first reference that came to mind but you know that's how you know that was a death contraption made to kill you um but mine was made to save my life and so this contraption was on me and it was only on the third day when one of my best girlfriends came into my room um and she just looked petrified there was so much going on at the time i was in intensive care nobody knew what was going on nobody knew what my diagnosis um was and she just looked at me and she was trying to be so calm but she had tears in her eyes and she just was talking to me but I could still tell she was very distracted um, and finally she's like does that thing on your head hurt and I was like what thing on my head and by this point I had um, just had the uh, ventilator taken out of my throat and so I was talking but not very loudly and I was like what thing on my head and she's like the thing on your head, does that hurt? And then she was like in shock that I didn't know what she was talking about. And I'm like, there's nothing on my head. What are you talking about? And she goes, Taylor, there's something on your head. And I was like, no, girl. I'm like, you're crazy, girl, you're crazy. And she's like, you haven't seen it? And I'm like, no, there's nothing on my head. And again, I was very drugged up at the time. But I was like, let me see it. And she's like, no, 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 no. No, it's okay. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need to see it. And we went back and forth, and she really didn't want to show me. But she's like, you promise you won't say anything to my your mom if I show you? And I said, I promise. And the reason why she said that is because my mom, at the time, was really protective over me and didn't want anyone to 
freak me out and get me freaked out unnecessarily. Um, and so she just was like, when you go in there, act normal, pretend like everything's fine. Yeah, so I told her and forced her almost to show it to me. And so she got a, um, she got some kind of mirror and I looked at it for the very first time. Days later was the first time I realized I had this contraption on my head. And it was terrifying. I was so scared because I remember looking at it and thinking, oh my god. Something really, really bad must have happened for me to need this. And I was so in shock that I couldn't feel it. I was so in shock that I didn't notice it. And it was then, it was like after that, I it was all I noticed. I would turn my eyes just a little bit. I could see the bars in the front. And um, my peripheral vision got really great. And I could start to see the bars in the back. And then I realized it was attached to this hard thing on my chest. And it was just devastating and shocking all at once but when it was explained um, my doctor later that day explained to me what it was and what it was doing um, I knew it was good for me but I also knew that you know that was the time I realized my life probably was never going to be the same again and if you can imagine a couple days after my surgery looking at it it had you know still had it's really graphic but it still had blood around it and some of the blood was hardening so it just looked really so much worse than it actually was at the time but it just was a real shock for anybody I think and especially being 14 I was like oh what is going on um but needless to say I was at that hospital for three weeks I couldn't move and barely do anything while having that thing on my forehead I was scared to sneeze I thought that if I sneezed too hard it would like shake my neck um, and then I went to physical rehab for a few weeks and around week seven I went for a checkup to do an x-ray on my spine and for them to see how my spine was healing and so I went into the checkup just thinking it was going to be a regular checkup and when I came back to the doctor's office he said that everything was looking great and my spine had realigned um, or was like on the journey to realigning and that my it was good to go and I could take off this halo and I was like perfect so excited to get this hunk of metal off my forehead it was hell to sleep in and everything so I was so 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 excited to take it off and so I was like okay when are we booking an OR to get it off and he's like an OR what are you talking about no no, no we're gonna do it in office I'm like okay like let's book an appointment to do this and so you can like you know sedate me in your office or something and he's like oh no 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 no, we're doing it today and we don't put anybody under to do this to take this off and he's like we're gonna do it right here today and I looked at him like um sir it was kind of like the disbelief I looked at my coach with when he suggested I do that skill that landed me in this wheelchair and again if you want to hear that very long story and how I ended up in a wheelchair, hit that like and subscribe button below and comment that you want to hear my full how I got in a wheelchair story time. Um, and I was just in shock, but I was like, okay, he's not going to put me under. That's fine. I don't like being sedated anyway, really. But okay, what are you going to give me as a drug to numb the pain? And he's like, I don't like to give anybody drugs to take out your halo because I need you to be awake enough to tell me if you feel any pain and so I looked at this man and I was like so you're not going to give me drugs because you know this is going to be painful and in the case that I do feel pain but you're not sure if I will but if I do feel pain there's nothing you can do about it and he pretty much was like yeah he's like the quicker we get this done is the quicker you can get it off and the quicker we can get you back to rehab and get your body moving again and I was like just like, sir, 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 what are you talking about? And we went back and forth for so long, but he's like, this is what we do. And so I'm like, okay, can I at least have an Advil, a Tylenol, anything? And he's just like, no, he's like, it's going to be quick and it won't hurt that much. Famous last words. And so I asked him, I'm like, okay, for something like this, you know, I have screws screwed into my skull. I'm like, how are you going to take this out? And he's like, oh, we're going to go get a wrench. And I, like, I actually laughed out loud. I was like, ha, 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 you're cool story, bro. Like, what, what actual medical tool are you going to use to get this out? And when I tell you this man left the room, 
came back in with a wrench. Let that sink in a bit with me. A wrench. Came back in with a wrench for my forehead and I was like, hey, this is my life right now. Like this is really happening. I'm like, this is a horror movie, this is where I die, like this is this is the end. Cause I knew there's no way that something screwed into your skull coming out, it's not gonna hurt. And so I was lying down and he goes to <laughs> Wait, tell you, he goes to remove the first screw behind my right ear. And if you can imagine, I have four in my forehead and one behind each ear. And so what I didn't even anticipate at the time was if gravity-wise, if I'm lying down, if you take out this screw, the first thing that's going to happen is your head is going to drop a little bit that way. And so when he started to unscrew the screw, the screaming. I was screaming bloody murder the entire time because not only was I hearing the sound of a screw coming out of my skull, not only was I feeling the pain of the screw coming out of my skull, also my hair had grown around the screw. So it was like a combination of all three of those pains at once. And when he started to screw it, even just a little bit, he stopped part way through because I was screaming so much and my head dropped, and that feeling of my head dropping pulled on all four of them in the front. And guys, I can't even... Oh, the thought of it still to this... Oh my god, the thought of it still to this day is like unimaginable. It's like an unimaginable pain. And I felt the pressure of the screws in the front pulling because my head had finally moved for the first time in weeks. And I was crying so hard and he started to, like, he grabbed the bottom of my head to hold it up so it wasn't pulling so hard. And he just kept unscrewing and saying I'm sorry the entire time. And when he was finally done with the first one, I thought to myself, I'm like, I have to go through this five more times. And what I will admit was the first one was definitely the worst, but unscrewing the left side behind the ear was so painful as well because my head dropped again but this time we put a pillow behind so it wasn't as far um and then the first two on the left side of my forehead were so painful and blood was coming down my face um and I was screaming the whole time um but when he went to go do the right side where you can see I have my biggest I'll try to zoom in but that's where the biggest scar is right here um, he did the one that was on the outside, which you can barely see, but the one that's right here, for whatever reason, what he thought happened afterwards was somehow the way my bone grew, because your bone starts to, like, you know, try to repair itself around any foreign object, and he thinks that the way it grew kind of made the screw go in a bit at an angle, so when he tried to screw it out with a wrench, it wasn't really budging and he kind of had to shake it and then screw it out and then shake it and screw it out and I just could hear the crunching of the screw the entire time and by the time it was done I had no voice almost because I'd been screaming so much and I could see in his eyes that he knew it was going to be worse than he said it was going to be but if he were to have told me it was going to be that bad, I probably would have still had that thing on to this day. Um, and he just looked at me and he said, you know, you're one of the quietest people I've ever done this to. You're very strong. Um, and now you'll be able to get your body moving as much as possible. And he's like, I know you're going to hate me for probably ever. Which I can honestly say don't anymore. I did hold that grudge for a good couple of years. It's been 10 years since my accident. I probably held that grudge for nine and a half of those 10 years. Um, but yeah, so that's essentially from there I went on to have a neck brace and then there's a whole other less of my story of rehab, which again, if you want to hear more of, like and subscribe below. But um, that's the story of how I got the scar. For whatever reason, that screw left a really big scar on my forehead. Um, so Whenever I'm doing a skincare video, guys, if you're wondering why and you thought to be a little bit mean and write a mean comment in the thing, know that I went through hell just to get the scar. Yeah. 
I've also been contemplating getting the scar surgically fixed. I've seen a plastic surgeon where they told me they can do this kind of weird stitch to heal it and make it um, so essentially just a line instead of a divot into my face because I feel like it's like my, I call it my Frankenstein scars but um, I don't know I kind of go back and forth with it deciding if I want to do it or if I don't want to do it. So if you guys think that it would be cool for me to kind of you know document my journey finding a surgeon who can help me get the scar fixed um, comment below if you think I shouldn't get it fixed and just leave it I mean it is a battle wound it really really is and I do appreciate battle wounds and I have a lot of them I have a huge scar going down my neck I have scars all over um, but this one's on my face and it's kind of very distracting to me um, I've just been this year comfortable enough to actually wear my hair mainly in the middle like I usually part my hair on the side so I don't have to see my scar and I hate when people ask me um, who don't know me this like they're like oh my god like how'd you get that and I'm kind of tired of that but maybe I should be an adult and just suck it up or maybe I should just take control of my body and get it fixed if it's bothering me so much would love to hear your opinion on that I hope the story wasn't too too graphic for you guys I definitely could have had a little more details because it was that bad but um yeah if you like what you saw here if you want to hear more about my story uh, like and subscribe and thank you so much if you stayed and watched to the very end I love you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos very very soon bye